I've made a little progress on the game that I've been making on my iPad using Swift Playgrounds. If you've been following along on this series, great. If not, there'll be a link to the playlist down below so you can catch up and see where this all started. I think it's starting to really come to life. We're gonna dive into the code and I'll show you what I've changed and what I've added to the game. Where we left off, just a very quick recap, we had a timer and you could uh, you know, tap on the shape to match what you needed to do. It was a proof of concept really, just kind of getting started. Not a game yet, there's no points, there's no levels. The first thing I'm gonna do is add additional scenes. And in order to do that, I need to do some trickery with Swift Playgrounds because it's not the same as it would be if this was just a straight Sprite Kid game because we need to communicate with Content View, which right now is is actually called Main Menu. And I'm, I'm gonna change that because I wanna have a, a Sprite Kit scene called Main Menu. So that's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna do and rename this to uh, Content View. And then I'm going to add a Swift file called Main Menu. Now I need to come back here. I need to make sure I change this to uh, Content View so it matches. And I also need to go into the My App section and change this content view. Now, Main Menu is kind of the next thing we need to do. Basically, I need to create a scene for the sprite view, which is shown inside of Content View. So we have Content View right here, and we have a scene for Level 1. We're also going to have a scene for main menu and eventually we're going to also need other scenes as well like game over and maybe a, a winning scene and maybe a scene to store high scores but for now let's just start with main menu this is going to be pretty straightforward it's just a standard sprite kit scene so in order to get started we need to make sure we import sprite kit and then we just set up a scene like any other sprite kit scene main menu it's a class and it's going to be an sk scene we'll open this up uh, we're gonna have our override function did move to view we're also going to need a touches began function so that's going to be an override of touches began. You'll see how this all comes to life in a second. So what I want to do is have there be a start button that you tap on to enter the game. Because if you remember right now, like if I restart this, it just starts counting down. There's no prompt, no nothing. So I want to make sure that we click start game so that the player's actively ready to start rather than just launching into something and then having the timer start. Let's create the start button then. So that's gonna be a start button and it's gonna be a SK sprite node and it's also gonna have a label. So we're gonna need a start button label and that will be an SK label node. And then inside of our did move to view, so when the view loads, we're gonna initiate these this button and this label. So the start button is going to equal an SK sprite node of a uh, color and a size. Uh, we'll just give it a dot blue and a CG size of 350 by 100. It's also going to need a position. We'll do a CG point and that will be 300 by 400. We're going to need to give it a name. And this is because the name is how we're going to trigger it. So we're going to have a touch inside of touches began in a second. We're going to look for this name in order to know that we hit this button. Because if you think about it, the main menu might have additional buttons like high score, might have settings. So we need to make sure when we tap the screen, we're tapping this specific button. And you'll see how I do that in a second. And then we just add this to the scene. So that's the start button. And we also need to give the button a label. Uh, that's gonna be the start button label. And that will have a text and that will be a start game. Start button label dot font size 40 font name. Uh, so I just chose American typewriter bold. I'll probably end up changing a lot of this as the game develops. This is again, mostly just placeholder to get the code up and running and make sure I like what I'm doing. And then once I get it set up, that's when I kind of go through and do the finishing touches and really hone in on the design. 
we got to give this position and this position is going to be relative to the button so we have the button that's an sk sprite node this position is actually relative to inside that and be, that's because we're going to add this label into the button and you'll see that in a second so we have a cg point that's going to be zero and then y will be minus 15 and then we're going to do start button dot add child start button label basically the the start button label is a child of the start button. Uh, obviously right now we're still loading the game into level one, but if I come to content view and I create a scene for main menu and then load that scene instead, we should see what we just created. All right, so I'm gonna create a variable called main menu. This is mean SK scene. And we're just gonna let this scene equal uh, main menu has no initializers that are required. We'll give it a size 600 by 600. Scene dot scale mode, aspect fill, return scene. Okay, so now instead of loading scene, which actually will change to a uh, level one scene, and then we're gonna load level one scene here. So this is like how the game would be, right? This is the, but instead of level one scene, I'm gonna do um, main menu and now we have a start game, but it doesn't do anything yet. So we need to add the touches began in order to move from this scene to the next scene. And in order to do that, because this code is inside of Swift UI's content view, we need a way of communicating to content view what is happening. What I ended up coming up with, and there may be better ways to do this, but this is the, the way that I have come up with. And that was to use the bindings and my game data um, file to store a game state, whether it's main menu, playing, or maybe future ones of like the high score or whatever. Basically, whatever scene I want to be in, I'm going to toggle this by a string. Probably not the best way of doing this, but it's working for this small game. And in Swift Playgrounds on the iPad, it's kind of the best way that I've come up with doing it. If there's other ways, let me know what you think down below. I'm gonna have a binding here of our game state, and that will be a string. Now, of course, we need to initialize this as a binding of a string, uh, just like we do for the other bindings in level one. Same concept here. So we're gonna have that. We're gonna initialize it with a size, CG size, self dot scale mode. And this is also going to ask us to have this required initializer here. So we're gonna click fix on that. We need to make sure that in game data, we've captured the game state. So we need to publish our game state string. This is one of the reasons why I think this is not the best approach is because I'm using basically hard-coded strings. So if I make a typo or anything along the way, it's gonna be really hard to track this down. And it's just a matter of understanding that, knowing the risk and, and kind of hopefully being able to figure it out uh, if it happens. But I'm gonna default this game state to main, which will be the main menu, and then we'll change it through actions in the code to swap to level one or other places uh, in the app. Inside of main menu, we might switch it to say level one if we are tapping on our start button. And that would look something like this, right? So we'd have basically a guard, let touch equal touches dot first, else turn. This is all pretty standard. Let location equal touch dot location in self. Let touched nodes equal nodes at location. And then for n in touched nodes, if n dot name equals start button. Is that what I called it? Yeah. Then what we're going to do is set game state equal to playing. So that means that if we do that, then we're going to go to level one, but we haven't set that up yet. What we're actually going to do is have inside this V stack, uh, we need to have an if game data dot game state equals main. So then we do 
else if uh, game data dot game state equals playing. And here we're going to be in level one scene. So now um, if I restart this, everything hopefully works. We might be missing. Okay, we're missing some stuff here. We need to have uh, game state game data. Uh, this is going to be a binding game data dot game state. All right, so now we have that. We cleared our errors. Um, so now if I click on start game, we go to the game. Uh, so we still just have this, you know, same thing here where, where nothing happens at the end. We don't get points. So let's work on that. The first thing we can do is add points to the game. So every time the player gets a right square, let's give them some points. That's pretty easy to do. We're going to need to capture player points as a published variable as well, because we need to have them in multiple places. So that would be player points. It'll be an integer. We'll set it to zero. Um, we're going to need to have that in level one player points. It's an integer. And uh, we want that here. Player points is a binding of an integer. This comes in here. We have player points. So say when we, uh, when we click on a shape and we get the right shape, uh, we can do player, player points, uh, plus equals, uh, let's just give them 10 points. So every time, every time they score, they get 10 points. You know what? I think if someone doesn't click the right thing, they should lose time. So I'm going to do a uh, timer dot total seconds dot minus equals, you know, it's all a guess when, when you're starting out, you have no kind of frame of reference for what balance should be like. Um, but I like to make it be a little bit interesting. So I'm going to do one uh, times minus uh, CG flow of uh, one times level. So basically, as you progress, you lose more time or you lose time faster if you make a mistake. That just makes it a little harder. Um, balance is something you do later anyway. Let's let's figure this out. But we need to visualize this. So this is going to be part of content view. Uh, and that's pretty easy as well. We can just have a text field here called um, current score. And then we have a text of game data dot player points. And uh, we'll do font, make this nice and big so people can see it, dot system, size, three. Wait, I need to add this here, uh, player points. Uh, that would be the problem, player points. And now it shows up. And now if I play the game, theoretically we get points as we score 10, 30, and so on and so forth. But again, still nothing happens when we get to the end of this. Uh, it just stays here. My idea is to have multiple levels in this game. So you clear the board once, it repopulates, clear the board again, it repopulates, it clears the board again, repopulates. Each time it repopulates, it adds more shapes, more colors, and there's maybe less time for you to clear the board. And you get more points the further up the level you go. And that's kind of the idea of the game. So let's add that functionality now. All right, so in order to do this, it's actually a little bit complicated. We have to change a little bit of what we have currently in the game because, so I could go through and, and create Say I want to add more shapes and more colors to the game. I could create, you know, three more colors of circles and three more colors of squares and then add four different colors of triangles or diamonds or whatever shapes I want to add to the game. And I'd have a whole bunch of assets in the game. That's a way of doing it. I don't want to go that way. So what I came up with was a way to have four assets in the game, a circle, a square, a diamond, and a star, based on the code that is given to these, I'm able to change the color. The first thing is I need to add those white shapes to the game, and I can do that very easily. Just insert here, and they're all in here. So I'm gonna select the four white shapes that I have. 
open. Now we have the four shapes. I'm going to also delete the blue circle. Whoops. Going to delete the blue circle. Going to delete the blue square. All right, so now I have a white circle, a white diamond, a white square, and a white star. All right, so in order to do this, the first thing you're gonna wonder is, well, right now what I'm doing is I have uh, strings for colors and strings for shapes. And those, when I create a shape, right, in a, in this mile statement, those are added together to create this texture string. I'm not doing that anymore. I changed the approach. Colors is gonna be an array of UI color. And that means that we also are gonna need to change our target color from a string to a UI uh, color, which means that this one changes to a UI color. This is preparing for the target aspect of it because we're gonna need to do that as well. And then colors is gonna be four different colors. So we're gonna have, so we're gonna have UI color dot blue, dot orange, dot purple, and dot green. So those are our colors. Now, obviously this is gonna cause some problems because it's trying to add a color to a shape that doesn't work. So what we end up doing here is that a texture string actually just becomes a random shape. And then the color becomes random color. And we'll need to fix this as well. Uh, we no longer need a shape dot shape color. But what we do need to add is a shape dot color blend factor equals one. And then here, instead of shape color, we just want the color of that shape index. And then in get random color, we're gonna return a UI color. And then I need to make sure that game data reflects this. So target color is a UI color, and we'll default that to dot white. And let's see, does that clear all the errors? Uh, we need, um, this one to be shape.color. Now, when I start the game, we have all the different colors. Perfect. But you'll notice that the target is now broken, and we started working on that when we, when we set this binding up here for target color. So now we're passing that data through target color. Do we already have that? Yes. So here, target color is shapes on board color. So all we need to do is come over to our content view, and where we're displaying target color right now, what we're doing is we're adding that string together like we did before, but we don't wanna do that now. We just need to get the image of the shape. And then this shape is going to be uh, resizable. We're gonna have a foreground color of color dot uh, game data dot target color. And we're gonna have color multiply color game data dot target color. And now when we click start game, we get a four blue square, four blue square, three blue circle, three blue circle, and so on and so forth. So now we have all of the shapes that we want in the game. Again, we still don't have progression. We don't have more levels that's coming next. So let's do that now. All right. So the way that I set this up was pretty straightforward. I may change this down the road, but right now it's just to get a feeling of progression through the game. And what I did was I created a variable called level. We're gonna set that equal to one at the start. And now inside of get random shape and get random color, I'm gonna create a, a variable called random index equals zero. Um, and then we're gonna switch level so we're just creating a, a switch statement here. And we're gonna have case one, case two, case three, case four, case five, default. Um, no levels beyond. For these, we're gonna do random index equals an integer dot random in zero to one. Oops, no space. We have um, two, three, four, four, because four is zero to four is 
five items, we may actually have some errors. Uh, we obviously need to add diamond and star. Pretty sure actually that we get an error because this is, if we get here, we have zero, one, two, three, four, which is five numbers. And if we're gonna change this from shapes.random to shapes random index, that means we could have a random index of four, which doesn't exist. So yeah, so right now we either need more shapes or less uh, things. So I'm just gonna do one, 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 two, three, three, three. We'll add more shapes or something along the line as we get there uh, to make this progression longer. But this is the idea for now. And, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna copy this part here. Uh, this random index part. We're going to do the same thing for color. And then here we're going to do colors random index. And then we're going to return random color. Uh, so now we need um, to determine what how to advance that, right? How to increase levels. So in order to do that, I need a function for reset board, which will allow me to reset the board. Uh, so that will be function uh, reset board and this is going to actually just be pretty similar to uh, did move to view right it, because we're basically just restarting the game so we're doing all of this but at the same time um, before we get in here we need to make sure that if level is greater than five let's see, print um, leave one and then at the very top of this we'll do level plus equals one which will increment our level. And now we need to reset the board at some point. Where do we call reset board? Well, when we get the player targets, we have if shapes on board dot count equals zero already. So before we return, we can do reset board. We could even add some points to the player for beating a level. So let's do player points plus equals a level times maybe uh, the integer of how much time is left on your clock. So that way at level one, you get some points times whatever is left and it incentivizes you to get, get there faster. And then we're also going to restart the timer, um, dot restart timer. This is gonna be moved to the uh, actual reset board function, but we'll write it here and then we'll move it. Level times three. So I'm gonna move I'm gonna move both of these. So we're gonna have reset board. And then uh, when we do this stuff here, we'll increase our player our player points this, and then we'll increase the level because we wanna make sure that it's the previous level. And then we reset the board. And based on that level, we're going to all of these random indexes incremented. All right, let's, let's see this in action now. So we're gonna start game. So we just have circles, squares, and just orange and blue. And now we have uh, diamonds, purple are added, and our timer is um, you know starting lower. And now we have green. We didn't get any stars this time, but I, I'm pretty sure we we could have. Just didn't work out to randomly generate them. Now we have a whole bunch of stars. And now we're beyond level five, so nothing happens here. Uh, we're just getting a bunch of circles. All right, so we need to have something that happens when the game ends. We need a way for the game to end. So the game can end by the timer going below zero. We don't have anything to do that right now, but that's a really easy uh, thing to solve because we have the timer being updated. So we just need to basically say that in this update function, if our timer dot total seconds is less than or equal to zero, uh, then we're gonna say uh, game state equals loss. So that's pretty simple. Now we, I guess, don't have game state in our level one yet. All right, so we need at binding var game state, which is a string, uh, game state binding string, and then, uh, of course, we're going to need to add that here. Game state, game data, game state. Okay. Uh, in level one, this should now recognize game state. 
we have loss, which means we need another scene for loss. And that's going to be our game over scene. So Swift file. And I'm just going to copy our main menu file because it's going to be very, very similar. Um, so let's copy that. This is going to be a game over. B. We're going to call this game over. You know, really, we can just keep this the same. But instead of being blue, maybe we can just say red. And instead of having it say start game, we can have it say you lost. All right, so now, uh, theoretically, I start game. And if I just guess the wrong thing a bunch of times, I'm losing time fast. If it gets to zero, uh, yeah, it's, it's trying to go to a scene that doesn't exist. Because in content view, we never created... Um, the scene. So in here we're going to say uh, this is instead of main menu, game over. And instead of main menu, game over. Uh, we still have game data, so that's fine. And then we have another else if game data dot game state equals loss. And then uh, this is going to be, I can just copy these. And here we're going to have game over. So now, and then once this gets to zero, you lost, and then we can start again. Uh, eventually, yeah, we're going to have to work on hiding all of this stuff, but that, that'll come with time. Um, let's, should we create else if, should we create this? right because like you might win which means um you're gonna go to a different scene that's gonna display like your win scene or something right so let's create that it's gonna be the same it's very easy right it's basically just uh control c v this is gonna be a win scene this is gonna be win scene It'll be the same, uh, so we need to create that. It's basically going to be, you can copy and paste this. Uh-oh, did we freeze? I had a little bit of a glitch there. I need to copy this. We're going to create a new Swift file. It's going to be a win scene. This will be control V, win scene. All right, and then that's fine. Um, so win scene can be uh, U1, green, just to make it different. Obviously, you know, we're going to, I keep saying this, I keep saying this, obviously things are going to get better. This is structure first, polish next. So now if I come through, we need actually a way to win first. Um, so main menu, and that's going to basically be, um, we could do it there, or we could do it probably in the update functions better. So um, if level is greater than five, game state equals win. All right, let's do this here. Um, everything's hooked up. Um, we have our current score. So there's a lot more to come, right? I'm gonna be adding a high score function so that you can compete for, against yourself, I'm going to be adding, trying to add Game Center to this so that you can compete against other people around the world. I'm going to be adding polish and refinement, hopefully some animation. I'm going to be improving the artwork and sound. And finally, I'm going to release it to the App Store. If you want to see all of that, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.